so wise company. I looked up the Collins Dictionary and um, a friend, a friend is someone who you know well and like, but who is not related to you. It also goes on to say, if you friend someone, you ask them to be your friend on social media so that you can see each other's posts. Don't worry, we're not talking about social media today. We're talking about friends, friends. There's a famous um, writer um, who said this, you will have heard of him, called Winnie the Pooh. He said this, if you live to be a hundred, I want to live to be a hundred minus one, so that I never, hi Michael, it's lovely to see you mate, God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Lord, thank you for Michael, thank you for his friends that have brought him this morning, and I pray you'll bless him and his family now, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you buddy, take care. I'll read that again. If you live to be a hundred, I want to live to be a hundred minus one day so that I never have to live without you. There was a dad chatting with his son and this little small son said proudly, I know what the Bible means. And his dad smiled and said, what do you mean? The son said, I know. Okay, son, what does it mean? He said, daddy. It stands for basic information before leaving earth. Basic information before leaving earth. Today, we're going to be looking at stuff that could be argued is basic. But actually, it could make a profound difference in our lives. The Bible, a manual for living well. God's inspired word to us today. So number one, friends impact. Friends impact. In Proverbs 27, verse 17, we read this. Iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens the wits of another. Iron sharpens iron. Who is it in your life that speaks into your life, that helps you be all that God wants you to be? You see, Christian friends help us to live for Christ. Martin Luther said this. This life, therefore, is not godliness, but the process of becoming godly. Not health, but getting well. Not being, but becoming. Not rest, but exercise. We are not now what we shall be, but we are on the way. The process is not yet finished, but it is actively going on. This is not the goal, but it is the right road. At present, everything does not gleam and sparkle, but everything is being cleansed. Who is it that you allow to speak into your life and shape you? Are you being sharpened or are you being blunted? There's lots of different people in the Bible who had friends alongside them and who spoke into their lives. They had many obstacles, but those friends walked alongside them. We have Noah, despite a strange assignment and likely ridicule of his neighbours, obeyed God and built the boat that would preserve life on earth. We have Joseph, despite numerous personal tragedies, became preserver and protector of the fledgling nation of Israel. We have Moses, despite a deep sense of inadequacy, became the liberator, lawgiver and leader of the Israelites. We have Caleb. Despite being 85, he asked for and received the opportunity to defeat the Anakite peoples living near Hebron. We have Deborah. Despite being a woman, a position lacking respect in her day, led God's people to victory over their enemies. We have Gideon. Despite great fear and overwhelming odds, led the Israelites in defeating their Midianite oppressors. We have David. Despite his youth, the scorn of his brothers and formidable, formidable opponent defeated the dreaded Goliath and showed his mettle as a man after God's heart. We have Nathan, despite the possibility of retribution from King David, confronted David with his sins of adultery and murder. 
We have Josiah, despite having an evil father and grandfather, became a great reformer, turning the nation of Judah back to God. We have Esther, despite being young and a foreigner, became queen and saved God's people. We have Jeremiah, despite criticism, unpopularity and attacks against him, faithfully delivered God's message to the nation of Judah. We have Daniel, despite exile, opposition and an encounter with some rather ravenous lions, faithfully served and represented God before the most powerful world leaders of his time. We have John the Baptist, despite being misunderstood and ha occasionally having doubts, pointed others to Jesus. We have Mary, despite being a teenager, became the mother of Jesus Christ, who is the son of God and saviour of the world. We have Mary Magdalene, despite once being possessed by seven demons, became a faithful follower of Jesus and told the disciples that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Dead. We have Peter, despite a history of painful public failures, became the most visible and vocal leader of the early church. And we have Paul, despite being a bitter enemy of Christianity, became the foremost spokesman and apologist for the gospel. They would have had friends impacting their life. Iron sharpens iron, just as they impacted the world. So can we. Secondly, friends challenge. Friends hold you to account. I've got friends who do that. Some of them are here. I deeply appreciate it. I don't always appreciate what they say, but as I reflect on it, it really speaks into my life. Who are you accountable? Who challenges you? Proverbs 25 verse 26 says this, like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain are the righteous who give way before the wicked. We need people to challenge us, to show us what is right and what is wrong. If we want to be disciples of Jesus, we need to come and we need to have people around us who will put an arm around us and will challenge us. Winston Churchill said, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen we need to be courageous. We need to be courageous. I try to be the older I get, and I'm not that old, and I know some of you think of me as little James. I'm now 45. And, um, and um, that's a great blessing, but it also comes with great responsibility. And I have to challenge. I have friends that I have to challenge. Challenge me as well. Have courage. There's friends I wish I'd challenged, and I didn't. Who is the person who challenges you to live for Christ? Abraham Lincoln once said, no man ever got lost on a straight road. Who is it who you trust to speak into your life so that you may stay on the right paths? You see, friends say difficult stuff. Friends you trust say difficult stuff. Thirdly, friends persist. Proverbs 18, 24 says this, some friends play at friendship, but a true friend sticks closer than one's nearest kin. Some friends play at friendship, but a true friend sticks closer than one's nearest kin. If I said to you, what is the film franchise that best shows friendship? What would you say? What would you say, Sevi? Sorry? Lord of the Rings, no, that's not what I was thinking of. No, go a little lower, you know. Toy Story, Toy Story. Do you know, Toy Story is built about friendship. I could ask my film director friend, but it's pretty much all about friendship. And it's taken a staggering $2.9 billion at the box office. Randy Newman wrote this song. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. And listen to these words. When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed, you just remember what your old pal said. Boy, you've got a friend in me. It goes on to say, you got troubles and I got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together. We can see it through because you've got a friend in me. And as the years go by, our friendship will never die. You're going to see it's our destiny. You've got a friend in me. You see, friends 
persist. Friends, persist. Life is like an onion. You peel it off one layer at a time, and sometimes you weep. Who is it who weeps with you? Who is it who persists with you? When we do what we can, God will do what we can't. Keep, keep persisting. Fourthly, friends sacrifice. Friends sacrifice. A strong friendship is never easy. It takes work. If you're happy to sacrifice for another, then you'll know you're a real friend. We read this in John 15, verses 13 to 15. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I've heard from my father. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. Jesus laid his life down for you and for I. Friends, you see, they sacrifice time. They sacrifice time. They invest it. Don't say you don't have enough time. We have exactly the same hours per day that were given to Helen Keller. She was a famous missionary. Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Jefferson, and Albert Einstein. Every day, we have 86,000 seconds to use. How do you, how do I invest them? Every day, those seconds and those minutes that we fail to invest to a good purpose are ruled out and we can't carry them over. Let's use our 86,000 seconds wisely. There's a couple, and this could be some of you here, a couple were going on holiday and they were standing in line waiting to check their bags at the airline counter. The husband said to the wife, I wish we had bought the piano. The wife said, why? We've got 16 bags already. The husband said, yes, I know, but the tickets are on the piano. <laughs> the priority should have been having the tickets to fly. Not all the baggage. In the same way, friends, in the same way we need to make our friendships a priority. Make time. Make friends a priority. You've seen what it looks like when you do. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Martin Luther King Jr. said that. And somebody else famous, Mother Teresa. Unless life is lived for others, it's not worthwhile. And finally, fifthly, friends, you see, friends love. In Proverbs 17, verse 17, we read this. A friend loves at all times, and king's folk are born to share adversity. Famous writer, Agatha Christie, said, If you love, you will suffer. And if you do not love, you do not know the meaning of the Christian life. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Who is it? Who is it that you need to love? You see, friends love and point people to Jesus. We have Christian friends, but we have other friends. I have my friends that I'm praying for, my five. They're on my phone. Am I praying for five? Who is it that you're praying for? You see, in Jesus Christ, we have a love that can never be fathomed, a life that can never die, a righteousness that can never be tarnished, a peace that can never be understood, a rest that can never be disturbed, a joy that can never be diminished, a hope that can never be disappointed, a glory that can never be clouded, a light that can never be darkened, a purity that can never be defiled, a beauty that can never be marred, a wisdom that can never be baffled, resources that can never, never be exhausted. What friends are you pointing Jesus to? My prayer is that my friends, that our friends who don't yet know Jesus, would grasp who he is and understand what C.S. Lewis means when he writes, I believe in God like I believe in the sunrise, not because I can see it, but because I can see it 
all that it touches. Brothers and sisters, who is it that you are reaching with the good news of Jesus? We want to reach people. We want to see them restored by the love of Jesus. And we want to see them released into the gifting that God has placed within them. Who is it that you are getting alongside? I'd encourage you when you get home to maybe read the story of Zacchaeus from Luke 19. Read about it. See how Jesus came to a house and loved. And then go on and see how he told the parable. But then he went and he spent time with his Christian friends. We need to do both. Don't just be inside the church. Break out of it. We can have friends who are both here spurring us on. And we can also have friends who we are loving into the kingdom. I want to end by reading the dash. I read this at a friend's funeral, Joan Clark, um, just a little while ago. But I wonder how you want your friendships to look. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of his friends. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and spoke of the second with tears. But he said that what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth and now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth for it matters not how much we own the cars the house the cash what matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash so think about this long and hard are there things you'd like to change if you never know how much time is left you could be at dash mid-range if we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and what's real, and always try to understand the way other people feel, and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more, and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read, with your life's actions to rehash. Would you, please, would you be pleased with the things they say about how you spent your dash? Friends, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and equip you as you get alongside your friends. Think about how you'll spend your dash. This summer, take time out. Reflect on your friendships. Who do you need to call? Who do you need to challenge? Who do you need to demonstrate love? And don't forget, friends impact. Friends challenge. Friends persist. Friends sacrifice. And friends love. Shall we just pray as the band come back up? <coughs> Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for the friends that put an arm around me and challenge me, who help me to be more like you when I mess up, who love me, who persist with me. And I really pray that maybe if there's friends that we have not called for a while, Maybe they're friends that we know will challenge us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak to us. That we truly would be an authentic Christ-like community. Where friendship is key. Thank you for what it looks like when we see friends leading us. When we hear testimony of what friends can do together. And I pray now as we move towards communion, 
as I prepare my heart, as we prepare our hearts. That you would profoundly speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.